how to land a high paying DTS degree apprenticeship. So why should you care? Well, a DTS degree apprenticeship or a digital and technology solutions degree apprenticeship is a post 18 option where you're going to get a free degree. That means no debt whatsoever. You're going to get a £20,000 plus salary in year one. So that could be as an 18 or 19 year old unparalleled work experience and you're going to get a guaranteed job in your industry whether that's the technology sector the finance sector the engineering sector or whatever okay so why should you listen to me okay well my name's owen and last year i got into a dts degree apprenticeship myself and this year i've helped a whole bunch of people get into dts degree apprenticeship so here are some of the students i've helped get into kpmg bank of england amazon uh jlr which one's this one ibm just just to name a few of them yeah, here's another student I got into JLR, basically a starting salary on £24,480 as a 19-year-old, and a student I helped get into Amazon where the salary is 34632 for a software engineering DTS degree apprenticeship, okay? So in this video, we're going to cover how to land a high-paying DTS degree apprenticeship, okay? So there's basically three main things we're going to talk about. There's going to be timestamps in the description in case you want to skip to a certain section, okay? Requirements, being a top candidate, and then the application process. Okay, so starting off with requirements, there's basically two things I want to talk about here. First of all, grade requirements and then coding experience. So in terms of grade requirements, these vary between company, but each degree apprenticeship is going to have grade requirements for A levels, basically level three qualifications. It's usually around BBC at A level. Okay, so that's where degree apprenticeships are. Degree apprenticeship requirements are usually much lower than university. So university to go on like a sort of computer science um, course at a really good university you could be looking at an A star and two A's, three A's, that sort of thing. Um, but with a degree apprenticeship, usually the grade requirements are much lower. They're usually around a B, B, C sort of B's and C sort of level, which just takes a bit of pressure off your exams. It can be as high as AAA at the top finance companies, but usually that's as high as it goes. And you'll never really go to an A star or anything like that. You won't have to do that for a degree apprenticeship. So I'd recommend checking for each company when you go to apply just to see what their specific um, requirements are. But sort of as a rule of thumb, if it's like the top finance company, it's probably going to be like three A's. But every other company, like 80% of the other companies, it's going to be somewhere around the B's mark, the C's mark, something like that. The next requirement is coding experience. So let me give you give you a bit of background about myself. When I got my DTS degree apprenticeship offer, I'd never done computing GCSE, I'd never done computing A level, and I hadn't mastered any coding language at all. Okay, I'd done a couple of random courses, but I'd forgotten all of the stuff from the course. I couldn't really code anything for you right then and there. And that's absolutely fine, okay? Because for most companies, you don't need any coding experience, okay? And I'll just put a disclaimer out here. At, like, the top finance and technology companies, they can test your coding skills in the application process. Okay, so, for example, Goldman Sachs is open right now. Their second stage of their application is, like, a coding assessment where basically the, only the top here, you, like, you have to fully know in advance, like, Python or JavaScript or C Sharp or something like that, that you, you need to be able to code. Similarly, Amazon have a bit of um, coding required for some of their DTS degree apprenticeships, but not all of them. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. A couple of companies um, do require some sort of coding experience in the application process. But in general, most companies don't need anything at all. Okay, so I wouldn't worry about it if you've never done coding before. That's absolutely fine because what's more important is a candidate that has a willingness to learn, has adaptability and a growth mindset. Because the thing is, with software engineering with the technology industry and all this sort of thing it's rapidly changing okay there would be no point them saying in their like job description we need someone who knows python because chances are that company doesn't know doesn't use python and even if they do what happens in like one year's time when some like new innovation comes out and then they switch from using python to this all new different language and you you've said and you, and you can only do python right then it wouldn't be helpful, right? So it's it's less about, oh, can you do this specific thing? Because because the technology industry is so fast moving, they just need someone who can adapt. Because one year you're doing this, then this new thing comes up, then artificial intelligence comes up here, then this comes up here. You just need to be able to adapt. So that's what they're more looking for in a candidate, really. It's do you have that willingness to learn? Do you have that adaptability? And do you have the, that growth mindset? I think that's the three key things which are really important alongside other things like teamwork and communication. But these are the three things that are really important for getting into a DTS degree apprenticeship want to bear this in mind okay so those requirements we're going to move on to being a top candidate i'm going to 
bear in mind those three things, willingness to learn, adaptability, and a growth mindset. So there's a couple of things that you want to do before you go into the application process, just to make sure you have a good experience, you have a good history, you got a lot of skills which you can draw upon in the application process, which is going to make you a top candidate. Because at the end of the day, um, this is a job. They're hiring you for a job, this degree apprenticeship. They want someone who's going to be a good employee, a good worker for their company, who's going to help make the company money. Okay, he's going to work well within the team, etc. So you really need to be able to show that when you go into the application process and it all starts beforehand. Okay, so in the months leading up to applying, you need to be doing these sort of things to become a top candidate. So what I'd recommend is work experience. You 100% want to get work experience. Okay, work experience was the number one reason I managed to get my eight degree apprenticeship offers. I actually got eight offers. Work experience was the number one reason, okay, because I learned so much stuff while doing work experience. I've spoken to degree apprenticeship recruiters, and they also just say work experience shows a willingness to learn. Remember that? That's a key word we said here. Degree apprenticeship recruiters have told me that if you do work experience, it shows you have a willingness to learn. It shows you take initiative, and it shows you're um, sort of committed to your development and your growth. Remember this growth mindset. That's why work experience is so important. You definitely want to make sure you're getting work experience um, in person or virtual, um, and especially if you can get it with some big companies. Okay, so just by the way, I'm going to have a notion checklist in the description where there's basically a list of things you can do to become a top candidate, some like specific links where you can go to those links and do this work experience, do this online course, etc. So I'm going to have a couple of like really high work experience on, from some good companies on there. So in a second after the video, go and check that notion checklist, right? So work experience is something you want to get. And the next thing is online courses, webinars, and articles. Okay, so this can be specific to the industry you're applying for, whether you're applying for a DTS degree apprenticeship in the finance industry or a DTS degree apprenticeship in the engineering industry or a DTS degree apprenticeship in the technology industry. You want to make sure you're doing online courses, webinars, and articles. Again, because it's showing your willingness to learn. You're doing courses to learn new things. Okay, you've got a growth mindset. You're trying to expand your knowledge. Okay, so what I'd recommend is do a MOOC. Okay, do a webinar read some articles in the industry you're applying to, and then you can mention it in things like your cover letter, in your CV, in your interview, or go into the application process in a bit. But it's really important to have these things sort of ticked off. I'll put a couple of key courses and key webinars you can do um, in the checklist below. Um, but what I think is really important, I just want to highlight this, is two key areas I think you want to mention on your application. Number one, artificial intelligence, and number two, potentially quantum computing. Okay, I'd, I'll, I would, you want to make sure you've mentioned one of those. So when I'm helping people get into engineering, like mechanical engineering, I always tell them to mention sustainability because it's such a big field in engineering. Like you have cars trying to go electric and companies trying to be net zero and all this sort of thing. With sort of DTS and technology, it, it's basically a similar sort of thing. Like, but the key word you want to go for is artificial intelligence. I think that's probably the biggest topic um, that's going on right now. I think you might agree with that. Um, because obviously chat GPT, I don't know how long that was, maybe two years ago or something, and then there's always stuff going on with AI, meta AI, um, Gemini, and all this sort of thing, okay? So you definitely want to be mentioning artificial intelligence in your application somewhere. Another one you could mention is quantum computing, and another one's like augmented reality, virtual reality, something like that, just to show that you're up to date with the latest technologies, the latest innovations, and that sort of thing, okay? And the final thing is you want to make sure you've done a bunch of extracurricular activities. Because as well as that willingness to learn, that growth mindset and that adaptability and that sort of thing, they're also looking for the soft skills like teamwork, communication, leadership. Because these are like the core skills you're going to need to be a good employee. You're going to have to work within a team. You're going to have to deliver presentations. You're going to have to have confidence. You're going to have to have time management skills so you can manage deadlines. And where that comes from is doing extracurricular activities. So stuff that's not even related, this is where it comes in. So things like doing DOV, doing the DOV expedition was really good in developing my leadership skills and my teamwork skills, which I can apply to the workplace. Things like doing a sport, maybe you go to the gym. Even that is uh, developing your dedication, your resilience, which is going to make you a good candidate for the DTS degree apprenticeship because it shows you work hard and you're committed. Okay, so these are the sorts of things you want to be doing. And basically the more things from this sort of checklist that you get done the more attractive a candidate you are and the more likely you are to get through and end up getting the offer okay so this is really important that before you apply you sort of lay the groundwork and you make sure you're going to have a really good application because you've got so many experience good history lots of skills courses webinars extracurricular activities that sort of thing okay so notion checklist in the description absolutely free you can go there and i'll just put a list of um links to like courses and webinars and work experiences that i think would be useful okay so there we go that's what you need to do to be a top candidate let's move on to the application process okay so the application process this is what you need to get through to basically get the dts job okay 
So it's different to university for degree apprenticeships. They do it differently. Basically, with the application process, applications for September 2025 have started already. Okay, so in September, October of 2024, it's mainly finance companies who are starting their applications. So Goldman Sachs, EY have already opened their applications. From November 2024, it's going to be all other companies. Okay, so just have a think about that. If you're interested in finance, you need to get on top of that in September and October. If you're more interested in other industries like engineering, technology, maybe pharmaceuticals, uh, then you want to be doing that basically from November 2024 onwards, going into December, January, February, March. Then you need to be aware of this application process which is going on. Okay, so how to find companies which are offering DTS degree apprenticeship. There's three things you can do. Number one, you want to use the Rate My Apprenticeship website. Okay, where you can search for degree apprenticeship vacancies in digital and technology solutions. The second thing is the gov.uk find an apprenticeship service. You can do the same thing, search for companies. The problem with these two websites is that they don't cover everything. So like Rate My Apprenticeship probably covers like 50% of, of degree apprenticeships. The gov.uk one probably covers like another 50%, but there's a bit of an overlap. So there's some which aren't on either of these. So you, you can't just use one tool on its own because they're just not comprehensive enough they don't cover all the vacancies so the third thing you do is follow me on twitter or x for the latest updates because i'm going to be posting all the high paying dts degree apprenticeships um so you're not going to miss any because you, you might miss a couple if you just use rate my apprenticeship or you just use find apprenticeship service so the link will be in the description for my twitter account and i'll basically just be posting um updates to the high paying dts degree apprenticeships which you might be interested in okay so now in terms of the application process, there are four stages of the application process which you need to get through. Okay, so it's going to be the initial application where you can end up having to submit something like a CV, a cover letter, application questions. And if you're successful, you might go through to some sort of intermediate stage that could be psychometric testing, a video interview. And then finally, it's an assessment center. And this is where you're going to have to do an interview. You're going to have to do a presentation to some professionals in your industry. You're going to have to do a case study task in front of um, sort of a, a profession in your industry and also a group exercise we're gonna have to work with other candidates and basically come out on top and be the best candidate okay so that's the application process um, pretty lengthy especially when you're applying to a lot of companies I recommend applying to about 10 plus degree apprenticeships so you, you want to th think about 10 plus DTS degree apprenticeships that you can look for I applied personally for 13 degree apprenticeships that's sort of a rough guide you can use there I just want to highlight something, okay? So with this application process, it is very competitive, okay? Very competitive. The JLR, Digital and Technology Solutions Degree Apprenticeship, this is a very popular one. Uh, you're going to be going to university with Warwick, which is top five in the country um, for computer science. You're going to be getting a salary of £24,000 in your first year, and it's going to rise every single year after that. It is only the top 3% of candidates who actually succeed in getting an offer here. Okay, so it's very competitive, very, very competitive. Let me show you another one. JP Morgan, they have two degree apprenticeships, technology, and then they have like a technology is the DTS one. They have a DTS one and then like a different sort of financial services one. With their degree apprenticeships, the like average ratio for getting into it is the top 0.7% of candidates get in. Okay, that is super, 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 super competitive. Okay, so I just wanted to highlight these figures for you. Top 3% for some engineering company. Top 0.7%, it gets very high, um, especially when you're looking at finance companies and other technology companies like Amazon. Super competitive. This means you want to make sure you're thoroughly preparing, okay? Because a lot of people go into the degree apprenticeship application process. I I, I kind of want to say naive. That, that's the word that springs to mind. Sort of naively thinking they can just apply, get a degree apprenticeship, free degree. They're all sorted. Life's easy. Life's a dream, right? It's a bit harder than that because of these numbers you can see here, top 3%, top 0.7%. So you want to make sure you're thoroughly preparing. That previous step where I gave you that notion checklist, it's literally a case you want to do every single one of those. You don't even want to miss a single one. Okay. And then when it comes to this application process, it's really important that you practice because, again, people tell me how they go into like a video interview. They hadn't prepared at all. They didn't know what was going on and then they got rejected. You want to make sure that everything you go into, you've thoroughly researched. Okay, so maybe you've watched videos, you've done research online, you've asked people um, how to, how to succeed, how to do well. You've also practiced it, and this is especially important with the assessment centre. So I just want to highlight this with things like the assessment centre. When you're going to have interviews, it's all well and good like watching videos on interviews, maybe like researching a bit online about interviews, but you can't beat practice. You can't be doing some mock interviews beforehand with some like realistic questions. It's the same with like the group exercise or doing your presentation. It's all well and good to do the research and just listen to how you can do well. What's really important is practicing. So this is what I want to stress to you the most. If you want to get into some of these high paying DTS degree apprenticeships, top 3%, top 0.7%, you really need to put in the effort to thoroughly prepare. 
and practice okay that would be my number one advice to you okay so there we go those are the three things covered about how to get a dts degree apprenticeship those are the three steps if you want to watch another video now on how to specifically get through the application process how to pass every single stage then you can click there on the left and if you want my one-to-one -one coaching to help you get into some of the high paying dts degree apprenticeships so you can be one of the testimonials i mentioned earlier click there on the right feel free to leave a like if this video gave you value and thanks for watching i'll see you in a bit peace out